So what is sync thing? Well, it's a program or an app, whatever you want to call it, that you can install on your computer, on your server, on your NAS system. You can even install it on your Android phone if you want to. And, and what this app does is it can take and you can designate a certain directory or files from your desktop and it will synchronize it with like the R610 back here. So that if you make a change on your desktop, you save it, it automatically updates the file that's on your R610. Or if you have it across multiple machines, let's say you have it a desktop here and you have it backed up to the R610 and you have a friend across town or something like that that's working on the same file as you are on their laptop. Well, if you all three have sync thing on it, have everything set up properly. If, so say later that night, your friend does a little work on the file, they save it, it syncs up to your server, then it automatically syncs up to your desktop. So the next day when you wake up and you go to edit that file, all the work that they have already done overnight has been saved and it's been changed on your desktop so that when you start editing something or, or fixing or whatever, you know, whatever your, your workload might be, it is up to date. Every time you save it, it bing, bing, bing across all systems that you have it hooked up to and it saves them. So you do something, saves it, saves it. Now your friend comes on and they start looking at these files and they realize, oh, hey, Jason did something to the file. All right, cool. So we're ahead of the game now. And we're going to show you how to set that up on the uh, on a Linux machine and on the Windows desktop next on Low Res DIY. First up, we're going to install SyncThing in our Proxmox container. And we're gonna utilize it as basically our hub. So all other computers that are hooked up to it will get its uh, updates from the container. I, I already started one, it's 103, named it Sync Thing. I gave it 512 megabytes of uh, memory and swap, two cores and a 100 gigabyte hard drive. Now I've already uh, done an upt, apt update and an apt upgrade dash Y. So we are ready to install sync thing. First thing we're going to do is we're going to install the dependencies for it with an apt install curl apt transport HTTPS and the GNUPG. We're going to hit enter. Yes. We want to install all that. Once it's complete, we're going to go ahead and get the key for sync thing with this command right here. And then we are going to tell Ubuntu where the repository is so that every time we do an apt upgrade and apt update, it will update sync thing also. So let's go ahead and do that apt update. Then we're going to go ahead and install sync thing with an apt install sync thing. Now that it's installed, we're going to set this container up so that every time you reboot uh, Proxmox or restart the container, it automatically restarts sync thing. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to create this file. We're going to nano etc system md system sync thing at dot service and hit enter. And all of this here, you're going to add it in. It'll be in the uh, description for you. But the one thing you're going to have to make sure is over here, they're going to be uh, four X's and those represent um, the, excuse me, those represent the IP address of your container. So change those X's to whatever your IP address is. So control X and save it. With that done, we're going to reload the Damien with the system CTL Damien reload, hit enter. And then we are going to enable that file that you just created. And this is the actual command that will force, uh, force the container in Ubuntu to start up sync thing every time you start the system. Hit enter and let's go ahead and do a reboot. 
once the containers back up, you should be able to just go to the IP address of your container with port 8384. Hit enter and here it is. All right, the encryption usage report uh, daily. You can send reports back to the, the creators of sync thing if you want. I'm not gonna do that. Admin interface, we're going to, it's basically wanting you to give the GUI a username and password. So I'm gonna create the user as low res and the password is my password. I'm gonna hit save. We're gonna have to reboot, re-log into it. Uh, sync thing should not run as a privileged container. I did not set the container up as a privileged container. This is just kind of a standard uh, warning that sync thing puts out there. So let's go ahead and put okay on that. Okay, so now we have sync thing running in a container, but it doesn't have anything connected to it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to install sync thing on this desktop here. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to go to this website and you're going to download, I'm, I'm running windows 10. So you're going to download the windows 64 bit. And once it gets done downloading that file, we want to go into our downloads directory and right click on the zip file and hit extract all extract it. I've already extracted it. So. We're going to go ahead and skip that and it'll bring this file up double click and go into it and then right click on this directory and we want to copy it because we're going to take and we're going to set this up to where sync thing starts every time that you reboot windows so right click copy and i'm going to put it in my c drive program files right click and paste it and then we'll go into that directory and syncthing.exe is the file. Let's go ahead and copy that guy right now. Then go down to your little search bar, type in run, R-U-N, open that up and then type in shell colon colon startup. Then all you need to do is paste that file in and that's it it will every time you reboot windows sync thing will start up now but right now it's not running so let's go back to it just double click on it it'll bring this window up and this is sync thing starting up but the two don't know that that they're there that they even exist so we need to add a remote device and it's going to ask for a device id so let's go back to the setup we had on the uh, in the Proxmox container, hit action and show ID. And then we're gonna copy this right here, the, the long string, which is the ID of that sync thing system. We're gonna paste it in and let's go ahead and give it a name of Proxmox sync thing. And then we're going to save it. So now the desktop knows that the Proxmox container exists, but the container does not know about the desktop. So let's go into that. We're going to add a remote device. Oh, and it picked it up. So we'll double click on, or we'll just click on that. And let's give it a name of desktop sync thing. And we're going to save it. So now the two different systems know that they exist, but they're not sharing anything back and forth. So let's add a file and we'll just call it test. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save all of my YouTube videos from the desktop over to the, the server. And I have those on my D drive. Once you Put that in it's going to bring you up your options and youtube videos and we're just going to go ahead and do them all so we're going to hit save it's going to go through and it's going to scan that directory and it's going to update all those files okay now it's completed scanning all those files let's go in and edit and then we're going to go to sharing and we're going to share it with our Proxmox 
sync thing. We'll hit save. It's going to hook up to it. If we go back to that, it's going to say desktop sync thing wants to share folder test. Let's go ahead and add it. And we're going to hit save. And it's going to create that test folder on the server for us. And it's going to start syncing everything up back and forth. Okay, now that the two computers are synced up, they're both up to date right now. It keeps saying preparing, but it's just checking back and forth. So either way, they're both synced up. So let's go back to our uh, container. Let's do an LS. And you can see our test directory is now there. So let's CD into test and do an LS. And you can see all of the directories and files from our desktop are now on the server over here. But I want to take it a step further. So let's go back to the desktop and I want to go into the test file and let's go ahead and edit it. We're going to go to file version and right now it's set up to keep one version of that file. But I want to take it a step farther and we're going to go to simple file versioning. And what this does is it will keep five versions of that file. So you can update it five times and it will keep all five of those versions. And I want it to clean out after, let's give it 30 days to clean out. And we'll go ahead and save it. So, like I said, now you have five versions of that file. So, let's say I go back in and I update a couple videos. It'll update the Proxmox container. And once I get to that sixth update, it's going to delete it and it's just going to keep the five of them. Now that you know the basics of setting sync thing up on a Windows desktop or a Linux system, you can go ahead and hook your laptop up to it or uh, give access to any of your friends out there that you might want to allow to help you out with editing your videos and things like that. You can also take, and let's say you're a Shutterbug or your wife's a Shutterbug, and, and they take tons of photos with their, their phone. There is an app out there so that you can download the app, install it, set it up, and it will download your photos or music or videos or whatever you want to take from your phone and put it on a server like this. So you will always have uh, those available to you to edit or whatever you want to do with it. So with that, until next time, like it if you like it. And if you haven't done it yet, go ahead and walk up and just hit that subscribe button. And thanks for watching. <laughs>